Welcome to RV Freedom Live with Carenza and Brandon. Howdy. <laughs> We're going to be talking tonight about RVs and maintenance and a little bit about cars and maintenance. <laughs> Mostly about RVs and maintenance. Yes. And how they're not exactly like cars. Yeah. So let's ask, do you guys have an RV or are you looking for an RV and you expect it to be like a car where you can... You know, change the oil and just keep those fluids topped off and you're good to go. I hate to say it. RVs aren't cars. Oh. Hi, everybody. Krenza jumped the gun and forgot to introduce us all. So yeah. she's Krenza. I'm Brandon. <laughs> We're from the RV to Freedom Facebook group and RV to Freedom.com. And we have the online course Roadmap to Full-Time RVing to help get you on the road. So we're going to talk about the things that get us on the road today, the RV, and how sometimes people think they're just like cars, but RVs are not. They are not cars. RVs are not cars. I'm going to say <laughs> it again, <laughs> just because it's a big point. So we've got a lot of people watching, and we just want to see who's everybody's out there and say hello to Bob, Dwight, Daniel, Alan, Julie. Wow. Virginia. Hey, thanks, Dwight, for enjoying the course he's in the course with us yeah. and getting through it and greg and julie sandy a lot of people virginia all here so glad you guys are here and you know we're gonna say it one more time rvs, RVs are, are not, not cars, cars. <laughs> rvs are like a car with a trailer put on top of them yes <laughs> like a manufactured house so that is like the big first point here is you have a chassis and you have a house part. Cars don't have toilets or plumbing or or you know wooden <laughs> walls or and vinyl roofs. Well, some have vinyl roofs, but not really. Um, <laughs> you can pretty much expect when you buy a car that you drive it off the lot, and as long as you change the oil and keep air in the tires, that it's pretty much going to serve you well, and you shouldn't expect right. any major problems. And when you do have problems, it's like ah, this thing has so many problems for one minor inconvenience. RVs aren't the same. And um, unfortunately, people don't know that. And they think, well, if I just buy new, then my problems are solved and I can just have that warranty and go live my life easy. There's just different maintenance that needs to be kept up with them. And they're different. They're built differently. That's that's the biggest thing when you first get into it. And they're not built like cars. Yeah, there's a ton of handwork involved in RVs. And that's just the way it is. And uh, it just means that sometimes problems happen. But so the maintenance is the big thing we're talking about tonight. And it just being different than a car. It's not just an oil change. It's not just windshield wiper fluid. Although you do need those. <laughs> yes. But the main reason we wanted to talk about it today is because we spent all day yesterday up on top of the roof maintaining the RV. Because... Water kills RVs and RV roofs need maintenance. It's not like a car. We've said it too many times by now, <laughs> but it's not. And if you don't take care of these things, they're not going to last very long. So you do have, let me pull this up, your chassis maintenance. And this is like a car. Yeah. You know, just a little advanced car. Or <laughs> remember that it's a, most of the time you're gonna have a heavier duty or heavier duty. Heavier duty, -er. <laughs> a more <laughs> heavy duty more vehicle, heavy. and you're gonna be pushing more weight down the road. So you do want to make sure you're very diligent about your chassis maintenance, even on a trailer. You know, mm -hmm. axle bearings, wheels, tires. Make sure those things are working well. Right. And if you have a motorized. Do change the oil, like follow the service intervals, do the chassis lubes, do right. the things that need to be done according to the manufacturer. And if you do those, then yes, that part of the RV will be fairly reliable, pretty much like you're used to. It's the house that usually gets yeah. you. Jane said her hubby's a mechanic, so he did most of the maintenance on their Class Bs. That's great. Nice. And the Class B is nice because it, it does feel a little bit more like a car, True. although you've got... <laughs> You've got some extra bits there too. <laughs> but yeah, so the chassis is going to be more like your standard oil changes. Your All of that stuff will feel a little more normal to you. But like we said, it's usually it's a more heavy duty vehicle. Heavier duty. -er? Heavier, yeah, heavier <laughs> duty. Heavier duty vehicle. Um, and you're so, pushing a lot more weight. Exactly. 
So you need to make sure all of that stuff is kept up to date and, and uh, lubing the chassis just in general is yeah. something. Do you even do that on a car? I'm trying to think. If well, you're supposed to do it on a car, but that. most people have never done it in their life on a car, <laughs> but in a motor home, something like we have, and we're 20,000 pounds, which is kind of small for a motor home. It's a lot of weight on a lot of pivot points. And so making sure that stuff's done, it's not terribly expensive to get done. Um, making sure it's done, just making sure it's, ah, we can't talk tonight. <laughs> making sure it's done just makes things last longer. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. We're having a little trouble tonight. <laughs> and then on top of that, take you care have, of your in, your generator. If well, you this one. is this is kind of where you get past the chassis mm -hmm. and into the more RV specific maintenance. There is house maintenance to be done. There is there are things that you just don't deal with on a car at all. Mm -hmm. Most most cars cars don't have generators. No cars have generators. No. <laughs> Not all RVs have generators either. But so. if you do, you need to take care of it. It's mm -hmm. much like, you know, if you never run mm -hmm. your generator, it's much like just leaving your car sitting there forever, never running it. Eventually, it's just not going to start when you need it to. Right. So take care of that generator. Make sure it's working because when you need it, you need it. And it's usually because it's too damn <laughs> hot and you need it to cool down and you want that generator running now. Right. Right. <laughs> so that's just another thing that you have to make sure to keep up to date with you know those fluids need change too just like they do in the engine yep and that's something you've got to keep up with on an rv and it needs to be exercised don't just let mm -hmm. it sit still you know at least once a month start it let it run for a couple of hours and put a load on it so it's mm -hmm. running hard and it's burning out all the old gas in there and burning out all the old soot if you just run it for 15 minutes and turning it off you're almost doing yeah. worse to it because you're just building up a bunch of carbon and it never gets heated up so Take care of it. You see that every month in the Facebook group, we have a, did you remember to run your generator? Or when, when did you exercise your generator <laughs> right, last? last? Forget how we worded yes. it. The Monday maintenance post, which is today. Yeah. So yes, when did you exercise your generator last? I think it might be because it is a monthly thing that you should be doing, even if you're not using it. Yes. If you're using it constantly. It's not as big of a deal because you are using it. But uh, just a tip with that too is I'll, um, we don't always use our generator that all the time and that much. So one of the things we do with the motorhome is we'll run it when we are driving. Mm -hmm. And that way we can run the air conditioner too in the back. <laughs> yeah, because our dogs are back here and the dash air conditioner doesn't come that far back. So run it while you're driving, turn the propane off on the fridge, let the fridge run on electricity and just give some exercise and you're not bugging everybody in the RV park with your generator running. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. Keeps it just for us. The people on the road don't notice the noise. Yeah. <laughs> so as Brandon mentioned, yesterday we were up on the roof all day and that's because we were doing roof maintenance. Yes. And that is a big thing for RVs. Any RV. It's a uh, roof maintenance is like probably when the top priorities. When yes. Just, yeah. I mean, I mean, once the water gets in, your RV starts dying and yeah. it becomes, it just, the, the bills start going up for how expensive it's going to be to fix. So take care of your roof. Um, if you go under any trees and you feel them scraping down your roof, get up on your roof and check at least once a year, get up on the roof and check your seals. And then anything that's questionable, touch it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. We we spent the day just touching up a lot of things. And there's things that the, the way our roof was constructed, there's a lot of screws on it. And I didn't like the way it looked. So I just covered them all with sealant yeah. <laughs> just to make sure. Um, preventative measures yeah. here. He just wants to and then we sure. pulled off the vent covers to make sure that the sealant under the vent covers looks good and just make sure it's good. That's, I mean, take care of that because that needs to be taken care of. Otherwise, eventually, you're going to leak. RVs will leak eventually. They're not cars. They're not houses. You can't just trust that they work right. You just have to deal with them. Yeah. So um, yeah. we just, cause that, that water is a killer and that's just the main thing that you've got to watch out for. Yeah. And, and Julie said she didn't even know he needed to run a generator monthly or that you could run a built-in while driving. And yes, if it's a built-in generator in an RV, you can run yeah. it while you drive. Um, even some people on the back of their trailer will run their, their external generator on the, on a little, 
um, one of those trailer extensions on the back of their trailer. But you know, you need to see, you need to know it's there. But right. they are little engines. They're basically just little motors on their own that they can run while you're driving around. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It works quite well to keep the power going, and then the RV's cool. And if you pull in somewhere to stop and and go in for a bite to eat or something, you just leave it running, and then the dogs stay nice and cool, and you don't have to worry about them getting too hot outside. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> so yeah, take care of that roof. Check all your seals. Check underneath your vent covers. Um, just make sure it's all working right. Make sure your air conditioner is draining properly so mm -hmm. it doesn't back up and start putting water inside your RV. And basically just keep that water out. Right. And don't forget your slides. Your slides have seals on the roof of them too. Make sure they're in good shape too because if a slide gets wet, floor starts sagging and then it doesn't want to come in one day and then you're stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Not that that's ever happened to us. No, that's never happened to us. <laughs> anyway, water is killer. Just check for all those seals. Check. Just make sure there's been no snags or anything, too. If you've ever driven under a tree and you heard it scrape along the top, you probably want to check and make sure you don't have any tears or rips if you have some kind of vinyl roof, like a TPO roof or yeah. any of that stuff, because it could snag and pull and hey and then you've got this little hole in your room or if you're like uh, um our friends denny and veronica one of their windows flew off of their rv oh, right flew yeah. up and cut their roof so you know <laughs> watch out for that too i guess yeah um and julie asked yeah. is dicor the main sealant it is almost always the almost main sealant always. for everything um, but you don't use them on skylights because right. it can damage the skylights over time. There's a product called Sherbon SB140. I don't know how I remembered that right now because I was trying <laughs> to think of it earlier and I couldn't. Um, but it's for use around skylights because it won't it won't degrade the plastic. Um, Eternabond is another great one. It's a tape and it's like it's the stickiest stuff you've ever dealt with. Yes. Um, it's permanent. When it goes yeah. down, it's done. Yeah. But so, Eternabond is keep... good if. No. Um, well, Dicor is good for exactly, all. Exactly, Daniel. You keep oh, Dan. I read your name, Dan. Daniel. <laughs> yeah. But um, you keep that Eternabond on on, ha on hand just to have. Yeah. Like we have a little roll of it for emergencies. Yeah, if you scrape your roof and it's raining outside, you can actually go put a Eternabond down in the rain and cover that spot, and it's done. It'll be like that for twenty years. And Dan, it's also good for patching tires, uh, tubes and tires if yeah, you need to. I patched that. a bicycle tire, so you could probably t patch a motorcycle tire with it too. It doesn't right. hold forever, but it works. <laughs> right. But yeah, this stuff is great to keep on hand. It's expensive, it, but it's worth it. It is. But sometimes you can find ends at like a camping store yeah. or something. Stay away and from all the Flex Seal stuff though, because the Flex Seal stuff is, is unknown how well it stands up to UV rays. <laughs> That's usually what you're paying for is that that outer surface, making sure that's a high quality. And the Flex Seal stuff is kind of the as seen on TV product. And it's it is the as it seen, is seen on, on TV. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be made cheaper and you wanna make sure you put a good good quality stuff up there. Nice. <laughs> um, and just a, a story with the Eternabon, we pulled into, or maybe we're already at the campground mm -hmm. and some other person pulled into it, into the campground beside us in the rain and they're, their, um, the vent cover, the vent cover in the bathroom the whole... came off or it cracked something like that. On, it was just road. gone. And they were trying to tape down a, like a trash bag on top of the RV with, to, with, duct, with tape. duct tape in the rain, in the rain. Yeah. yeah. Cause the, to keep out the rain, because otherwise it'd be pouring inside. Mm -hmm. But of course that wasn't sticking duct tape, even though it's like duct tape as a joke, fix everything with duct yeah. tape. Not not RV stuff, not, the not in wet. the roof. Yeah. It does not work. Not the R yeah. So it was like a Coca-Cola commercial. I grabbed my <laughs> roll of it, turned it on, and I tossed it up on the roof and gave him a thumbs up. And, <laughs> yeah. And uh he patched his roof up real quick with that and got off the roof and he was very thankful the next day. <laughs> yes. We we actually have a a, a little uh, trivet made out of corks that they made. Yeah, that the, they make in giveaways. They, they give away. Yeah. yeah, it was a fun little RV story. But yeah, duct tape is great, but not in the rain. It doesn't no. work. So the, and you got to think about the sun that. beating down on things on the roof. You want to make sure stuff's <laughs> going to stand up to the sun. So Dicor is awesome stuff. Eternabond's awesome stuff. Check it at least once a year. More realistically, like twice a year. Um, but, you just don't want anything happening yeah. to it. That's the, the biggest thing is to prevent it and catch it. 
as early as you can. So there's another thing that is a little different from RVs, I mean, from cars to an RV. You do have a battery in your car, but it's a starter battery and you have one. Yeah. And you just need to make sure that's still good. Well, and it has one purpose, really. And it has, it's yeah, to it has turn on the purpose. car. So it either works or it doesn't work. Right. If it's not working perfectly, you don't really notice. You'll notice when it stops working. Right. That's about it. Right. But an RV, if you have a motorhome, you do have another starter battery in that. But you also have house batteries. You jumped the gun. I was waiting to no, hit it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you have. RV, you have your house batteries and you need to keep those in tip top shape and good working order to make sure that you make them last as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And you have to make, keep those in working order because it's running your RV when yeah. you're not plugged in to shore power. Yeah. If you would like to put your slides out, our RV, you don't run the engine when you put the the slides out. Right. So the battery's got to be in good shape. If you want to do any kind of off grid camping, your battery should be in good shape so you don't have to run the generator as long or your solar is not trying to keep up with it. And also the batteries are expensive. Um, you know, good, ba inexpensive batteries are $100. Good batteries are $300. And okay. if you don't take care of them, you're just going to replace them more often. And most people that don't know any better, they replace RV batteries every year or two. But realistically, you could get five to seven years out of your battery bank if you take care of it. Right. Now, there are many different, well, about three, I'd say many, that's yeah. about three different types of batteries that people use in RVs. But the ones that come with your RV when you purchase it, if it's new or most of the time, if it's used, if you're not buying it from somebody who's already upgraded, are going to be just straight up lead. Flooded lead flooded acid batteries. Lead acid. Yeah. And the flooded part is what we really are talking about making sure you keep up on because you need to keep those water levels there yeah <laughs> up i don't know what to call it yeah keep uh, them up keep keep, them up. keep your water keep the plates submerged underwater yeah. in your batteries and it's real simple again it's a thing you got to do about once a month if you're just do it once a month i can yes. tell you if you're doing it this just do it yeah, once a month and it's fine that's a good just a good baseline do it once a month especially if you are full-time and you're you know you're living in your rv and you're traveling yeah because you can run it down and running down that water in a battery is going to kill it. Yeah. It's and it's going to shorten the life and your batteries are not going to last as long. And then you're going to be like everybody else once a year, going to Costco, replacing your batteries. Right. And you don't need to do that. Save yourself the money. Um, it's <laughs> real simple. You check the water levels. If it's low, you add distilled water and then it's fine. And there's even, um, battery watering systems you can install mm -hmm. that make it easier if your battery's a little hard to get to. Right. But get yourself a funnel and some safety glasses because <laughs> there is battery acid in there and you just pour distilled water in. It's, it's, you know, 99 cents at right. the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> Cheap just, water. It's not, yeah. 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 It's, it's inexpensive to buy, but you use the distilled water in yeah. it. And as Dan said, um, yeah, the 12 volt system of your RV is the heart of the system. Your, your 12 volt are your, all your lights, mm -hmm. your water pump, your furnace. If you have a gas electric fridge, your, your fridge needs it. Right. Um, let's see what else there's your Some carbon lights, dioxide, yeah. your carbon monoxide, um, detectors, all of that stuff runs off the 12 volt side. Basically everything related right. to the, the life support systems of the RV is 12 volt. Um, and then like your TVs and your air conditioners and everything else. All That's the fluffy stuff. Yeah, all the, you, all you the extra live without. luxuries. But I mean, think about when you're traveling and yeah. if you stop and go in there to yeah. get something out if of you the fridge a, or, yeah. you know. If you have a trailer yeah. with an electric tongue jack, that's that's your batteries. You know, you don't want to get to the campground and you can't put your jack down because your batteries are dead. Right. So, so batteries are super important for RVs and that battery maintenance will keep them healthy. Yep. And they'll make them last longer and it'll save you money. Right. And money's good. <laughs> so all of this really affects. Well, it affects not only the RV you have, but the RV you might be looking to purchase. Yes. Yes. The water pump. And mm -hmm. Um because when you're looking to purchase an RV, you want to see that that person has taken care of the RV. Exactly. Have they maintained the roof? It's pretty easy to get up on the roof and look at it and be like, these seals are really old. When's the last time you were up here? <laughs> exactly. You know? Or you can see that they've added little bits of sealant here and there. And you're like, okay, good. They're taking care of it. Right. You know, right. just make sure the sealant's not super bright white like they put it on yesterday. Yeah. They put it up for sale. Um <laughs> 
you know, and then you can make sure the batteries are holding a charge, make sure they're mm -hmm. working properly, uh, make sure there's no water leaks in the RV, you know, general RV inspections, because these are not houses um, or cars or whatever. They are basically inexpensive manufactured homes with all of your furniture and all of your appliances and all of that stuff stuck on top of a bus chassis or stuck on top of a trailer <laughs> and sold to you at an affordable price. If they did everything we wanted them to do, then we'd never be able to afford these things. You know, even the bus people that, that have the vintage buses and they like those because, oh, they're metal skin. I'm like, yeah, but they were a million dollars when they were new. <laughs> like you didn't buy that new. You bought it 60 years old. Right. You know, now you can afford it. So as you, we, we don't have, you can buy new, you can buy used. It's still just kind of keeping up with the maintenance. We're mm -hmm. not vouching for either way yeah. because as it's new, it's still not built like a car. So it's not going yeah. to be perfect and drive off the lot and be the most pristine thing you've ever seen. You might get lucky. Yeah. It could but happen. But RVs are built good enough and no better. And you hear time and time again, lots of stories of, brand new RVs with just issues, not nothing major, but they're just annoyances that it's just because there's tons of handwork. I mean, the whole, everything above the frame up is built by hand and it's built inside out. And, you know, it's just, you know, our RV, it's, it's nice and it's solid and it works well, but the wallpaper was put up on a Friday and it's all starting to come down everywhere. And not, not that bad. It's minor, <laughs> yeah. but around all the door frames and everything, it wrinkles and everything is because whoever did it just didn't put enough glue on it or water or whatever. And, um, you know, stuff like that happens even with new RV. So don't think that if you just get a new RV, that your problems are solved and it's going to be like a car and you can drive it around for three to five years and never have to worry about it. Right. Because unfortunately that's just RV life. And we just, we just deal with that. Yeah. And then on the other hand, if you're looking at used RV, especially as you get to a certain age, you know, if you get older, it really becomes about how well it was taken care of mm -hmm. and how well the this, maintenance was kept. This up. goes to Greg's point here. He's asking, is it true that some of the older RVs are better built? <laughs> some uh, were built a little stronger. Yeah, some were better, built very yeah. well and those companies went out of business, but <laughs> yeah. the, the RV still exists because they didn't turn enough profit. Um, but when it comes to age, it's really about maintenance. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody loves to hate on Thor but if you've got a 20 year old Thor that's still rolling down the road and isn't leaking, and then you've got a 20 year old country coach that hasn't been driven in 15 years and it's and leaking, hasn't been kept up on I'll take the Thor every day. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all about how it was taken care of. Yeah. So what you want to find is that magical meticulous old engineer who bought it, documented everything, yes. took care of all the maintenance. You, they and, have records for yeah. the generator maintenance. It was run and when it was changed and yes. lubed and all of that. You and, know? Uh, and, and those guys do exist. We, we saw yes. this RV was a, sort of that guy. Uh, he was pretty good at it. And uh, we saw that one in, in Moab that the guy bought that Beaver Contessa. Yes. That thing looked brand new and it was 20 years old. Right. I mean, it was the paint was better than ours. Well, and we, we did uh, see when we were looking at one where the guy did have everything logged and he had pegboards on everything and written. And yeah, yeah they're, they are out there. So there but are, that maintenance, it really becomes a important part of of looking at an RV when you're going mm. to buy it. It also becomes an important um, factor in why an RV company might be considered better than others. Mm. Um, you know, you hear Newmar, Tiffin and Winnebago of, of the modern day motorhome companies are the, some of the better ones. It's not that the RVs are necessarily built that much better. They, there are some things they do, certain brands do that are nicer. The real thing is, is that there are people on the other end of the phone when you call and they've made records of what they did so that you can you can find a wiring diagram or, or figure out how something works. That's that's the real reason that these companies kind of become better. Yeah. You know? But <laughs> I didn't know that was maintenance. <laughs> oh, it's maintenance. It's also just, you know, asking about the, the company. Um Oh yeah, Julie and Marnie, they they took theirs in to get the wheel bearings repacked, which is another things you should check every year. And they they didn't even get charged. So yes, the the owner was awesome, but I want to know that shop because that shop that didn't charge you. <laughs> yeah. You know? I mean, you two females take in a trailer and they didn't charge you, they should have charged you extra. I mean, that's just how shops work. 
<laughs> um, I should have, you know, you need new halogen fluid or something. Um, but yeah, so that's, we just want you guys to go in, eyes open, understand that RV life does mean maintenance. And, you know, it's still not as bad as yard work. <laughs> but crawling around on the roof for a day is pretty tiring. But, you know, you can take it in and pay for that. It's a once a year thing, you know, to make sure it's done and done well. Yes. <laughs> it was Midas. Oh, wow. He had an RV car there. That's great. <laughs> um, yeah, Julie, I guess I can answer that real quick. Julie yes. just had a, a question. Do you scrape off the old sealant before adding new roof sealant? Or do you add to what's there? It depends, well, it depends. on what they use. I can say it depends. <laughs> <laughs> but with Dicor lap sealant, um, if it's not really, really yeah. old and cracked and dried out, if it's just minorly cracked on the surface, you can clean it with mineral spirits. And then you can put new Dicor right on top of the old stuff. That's and, what I was doing yesterday. Yeah. And that's why Dicor is awesome. It's it's really Marnie actually pretty asked that one. forgiving. <laughs> and the lap sealant just kind of, you put it on and it just kind of smooths itself out. You can't put it anywhere where there's a curve or it's going to run over the curve and start going down the side. But um, it's pretty nice. Now, if you're, um, some people like to use Silcaflex, Sikaflex, Silcaflex, something like that. I don't like it. I mean, it apparently lasts a long time, but what I don't like about it is if you have to replace it, you have to scrape it all up and you have to go all the way back down to the surface and then put it down again fresh. And that's, that's too much work. <laughs> I'd rather just look at it once a year and be like, yeah, it looks good. Or that's a little rough. And then, you know, wipe it down a little bit and squirt some new ones on there. <laughs> well, Marnie will be the one on the roof. Yeah. So yes, <laughs> it depends. And if you use the Dicor, yeah. It's it's pretty easy and you don't have to scrape it all off no. unless it's like it is really old and cracked. But if you guys were checking out that the one that you have, it's probably pretty good. So, yeah. So just stay up on it. Yeah. And just stay up on it. So there was there was like a little part where I could see this one little crack. We had one corner that had some cracked and just cleaned it off and then put some more. It looks like toothpaste when it comes out and starts yeah. spreading out. Yeah. And Kat, we <laughs> talked about a turn bond too. basically keep a tube of Dicor and some some amount of a turnabond on hand all the time and and you'll be good and you want the good the wide a turnabond that's yes. like four to six inches yeah. wide um that way if, if you have a tear you have a good margin all the way around it mm -hmm. that you're covered and like krenza said like a whole roll of a turnabond might cost you 70 dollars right but check for the ends at like a camping store yeah, sometimes, sometimes they'll, they'll sell you the ends or give them to you yes yeah, so you might get like three or bit. five feet that's all you need but, for emergencies. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it'd be great to have a whole roll, but it's a yeah. little expensive. <laughs> so that's, we just wanted to, to come in here and let you guys know that don't have RVs yet, that they aren't cars. They're still fun, but they do yeah. take a little bit of work. And, and just running out and buying new doesn't mean it's going to be problem right. free. Buy new for other reasons. Buy new because you want new. You want the new features. You want the new floor plan. You you like <laughs> the new chassis they're using or whatever. Don't buy new because it think you think you're going to avoid problems by buying new. And even if you do buy new, you still have to keep up on this maintenance. Yes. That's kind of the the real like the point of this. Keep up on your maintenance. Yes. And even <laughs> check your used. new you check your new RV and make sure yeah. that it was built right yeah <laughs> it's sometimes there's random little bits that have been left uh i think someone found that they didn't seal something on the roof yeah i've heard that a few times it's not very common not but you do common, hear the stories of people with a brand new rv and the roof leaks in the first rain so go up on the roof yourself Just and make sure look at it if you see anything that looks like water could get in somewhere that it's not supposed to question it and if they're right. blowing you off just throw some dicor on it and <laughs> be safe yeah, you might as well walk up there and give it a once over and that way you know what it looks like starting out too. Yeah. And then we, you can, I mean, if it's going to be your home and even if it's not your home and you're just using it for weekends, you don't want it sitting out there getting rained on with a hole. So you might as well start yeah. out on a good note and check it and then keep up on the maintenance, keep up on your generator. Well, on your chassis maintenance. So remember to follow all your guidelines about changing oil and lubing even the chassis and all of that. And remember that it is heavier duty than a car. So there's going to be a little bit more to it. Mm -hmm. And if you have a generator, make sure to keep up on that generator maintenance. You need to run it once a month. Under load. 
for at least two hours. Like let it get hot, let it work. Because when it works hard, it blows all the junk out and that's what you want. You don't want to just turn it on and let it idle for 15 minutes and then turn it off. You're not doing yourself any good. Okay. Yeah. Roof maintenance, make sure to get up there, check your seals, make sure they're not cracked. There's no holes. If you had a tree scrape up there that somehow it didn't rip a hole, especially if you have a vinyl roof, that mm -hmm. shouldn't rip a hole in a uh, fiberglass roof. And check all your plastic covers. The sun degrades them over yes. time. They get brittle. They might they might crack on you. Be careful touching them because our first RV, I just, I put my hand on one of the covers just to kind of turn and I just stuck my hand right through it because it was so brittle. Yes. Uh, fortunately, they're pretty easy to replace. Uh, there's there's a couple basic hinges that are simple. Um, and then, oh, go ahead. Good. No, you got it. Oh, the battery maintenance. Just make sure, especially if you have flooded lead acid batteries, that you're topping them off with water and, and check them monthly. If you're a full timer and you're traveling, you you will <laughs> use your batteries a lot. Yeah. So and make keep sure your batteries charged. Full batteries are happy batteries. So if you do mm -hmm. put it in storage, find some way to keep them charged, even if it means taking them out of the RV and putting them on a charger. But um, that makes them last longer. Don't just let them sit there. And Bob, to your question, uh, is there anything other than Dicor? Dicor is mostly what's used. There are other things, and I don't know the names of them. <laughs> um, the easy way to tell if it's Dicor is if you can kind of push your fingernail into it, it should feel soft. And if you peel into it a little bit, it'll be bright white inside. And it'll kind of feel like it wants to go back into shape. The other sealants I've seen are gray or they're they're kind of like a clearish color. Um, if it's bright white, it's probably it's Dicor. It's probably Dicor. Um, and if not, yeah. then call the manufacturer and ask mm -hmm. them what they used. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, Sandy, hire someone on the roof. I mean, yesterday on the roof, it was hot up there and, and I started getting a little shaky. <laughs> I started shaky. thinking, oh, this is why you pay somebody to do this. <laughs> yeah. Because we had waited too long. <laughs> <laughs> and Dan's got another point too. Don't forget about all the screws on the side of the trailers and, and underneath and everything. Make sure nothing's trying to back out because your house doesn't really go anywhere. You may have earthquakes where you live, but they're not frequent. Um, but your motorhome or your trailer is being dragged down the road. It's flexing, it's twisting, it's vibrating. Everything's trying to come apart. And don't take that in a bad way. They do a good job holding together, but they they're do. all trying to work but themselves apart. Yeah, it's nature. It's bouncing around. And yeah. Yeah, things are going to start moving. And yes, I and I heard that a lot with them. Trailers, those little square screws. Yeah. Square head screws. They start coming out and everybody has like this tool for them. Our previous motorhome, it was scary. They, The walls, um, there's the floor and the walls went down like this and they put big bolts up into the bottom of the to hold the floor, the walls to the floor. I found those bolts laying around inside the base. And I was just like, what's going on? Is our house going to fall off? Yes. Our chassis. Yeah. And Allison said they're, nearly all their fender screws rattled loose in the first few months. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I want to add one more here that we forgot to write down, but check the underneath for rust. Yeah. Um, again, the chassis is going to do pretty well like a vehicle does, but your bays, any lower storage that's added on by the manufacturer is not as good of metal usually, and it will rust. If, if you're driving through salty areas, if you're camping near the ocean, check it. There's some rust neutralizer mm -hmm. sprays you can spray on them that'll stop the rust and, and be in a good habit of renting if you're somewhere that if you you know, drive and you, they've salted the roads or if you're near the ocean for a long time, check all that stuff out. Right. And check it. And and here's another, when we're going to talk <laughs> and just recap on the recap maintenance and shopping, go ahead and check that underneath before you buy it. Yes. Yeah. It's not fun to crawl on the ground and stick your head underneath there, but it's better to know about it yeah. before you buy. And it's kind of the same thing as looking at the roof. If you look at the roof and the roof has never been touched, you know this person's not paying attention to the maintenance. If you look underneath and you're seeing rust, oh, more rust than you should, you know this person's not paying attention to maintenance. And you, now you need to be extra diligent, diligent <laughs> about the <laughs> about the maintenance and what has been taken care of. Because a lot of people just don't know, and that's that's the problem. Right, right. Yeah. And actually, Greg was just asking for those that are not mechanically inclined. If they, there's somewhere that they can get first-hand maintenance on the, on the maintenance and driving side of things. 
So there are driving schools yeah. that you can go take a driving class. I don't know if they deal with maintenance. We actually do have maintenance in our course. Yes, we do. And there are some um, hands-on tech schools, especially like if you're really hardcore, want to get into this, you could even go take the RV inspector course. Even if you don't mm -hmm. want to be an inspector, it's kind of expensive, but they're going to show you everything to look for. Um, right. And that could be a good, a good helpful thing to know. <laughs> I'm the, the pizza villain. Uh, that's true. I was thinking you were going maintenance vigilante on it or yeah, something. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, there are driving schools. We talk a lot about maintenance. We get into it as deep as we can um, without being hands-on. And then you, there are some hands-on programs for RV inspections. And a lot of it- Or in RV maintenance courses, if you want yeah. to even just learn how to do it yourself. I know that you're not mechanically inclined, yeah. but <laughs> if you wanted to do that, and then you could make a career out of it too. Like yeah, that. you can definitely hire inspectors when you're looking to buy an RV to make sure that- um, they they know what to look for. So they can look at it and tell you what's been done and hasn't been done, just like you'd hire a home inspector. And then as you're living in it and things start to fall apart, you're gonna start learning real fast. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately it happens, but we're all here for each other. You know, people have questions and they come in and ask and, and, uh, and start figuring things out. But Greg, if you do wanna take our course, because if you're looking to go on the road full time, the maintenance is included in it and a bunch of other stuff to get on the, on the road. Yeah. That's roadmap to fulltimerving.com. Yes. And then if you guys aren't in the group yet, you can join the RV to Freedom Facebook group, which some of you probably are watching from there at RV to Freedom group.com. And you can ask your questions in there. And well, you know, everybody in there loves to help. So yep. that's always a fun thing. <laughs> and can grab your cheat sheet. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's try different things. If you were shopping for an RV, because we're talking a lot about maintenance and shopping, grab the cheat sheet to help you get started and kind of keep track of things. Yeah, we designed it to help you just remember what to pay attention to. Because it's easy to walk into an RV and get super impressed by the pretty wallpaper and the floor colors and all of that, but forget to pay attention to the, the important stuff like the batteries and the generator and where all those things are and how big they are and what they've, they've given you. Because you can change the wallpaper. You can change right. the tank. You can't change the tank sizes very easily. So, um, yeah, that's why we created the cheat sheet. to help you keep it all straight in your head, too, because it... You know, they're all swirly on the outside and they're all mostly brown on the inside and eventually they all blur together in your head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we dropped the link right there in the comments and you can grab that too to help you on your journey. So just remember, RVs are not cars. Mm -mm. Um, one day they'll be better, but for now this is what they are. Right. <laughs> and we're actually going to talk to some manufacturers soon and give them a piece of our mind or at least, you know, try to help, but, uh, but they're not bad. You know, they're, they're, they take their maintenance. If you take care of them, they'll take care of you. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, we still love it. We deal with our maintenance. We put off the roof maintenance a little long. All our seals were actually still good. Thank goodness. We just touched up little things, but just try to do it earlier than when it's too hot outside. Yes. You don't want to be on the roof <laughs> when it's hot. It's dangerous. You get dehydrated. You get, the sun gets to you and you're going up and down ladders and it's a long way down if you mess up so, <laughs> yeah. and you can totally hire people to do that for you so that if you're not comfortable on the roof or you don't want to crawl up there then yeah have someone else do it but make sure it's done just make sure you keep up on all the maintenance but yeah <laughs> <laughs> still out in the sun all day we still love it so yes. <laughs> you guys have a great week this week come into the group hang out Join the discussions and we'll see you next week. Are next, we going? Are next we traveling week. next week? Are we traveling? We'll find out soon where we're going next. We're <laughs> we're on our way to Escapade and we haven't figured out that's the uh, the Escapees RV Club big rally. Um, we haven't figured yeah. out when we're gonna pull out of here and go that way yet. <laughs> if you guys are going to Escapade too, let us know. We'd love to meet up and see everyone. That would be a great thing. All right, we'll see you guys later.
And uh, we'll see a lot of you on the road. I, I, I recognize a lot of names here. All right. <laughs> see you guys. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this replay of our Facebook live show. Join our Facebook community to participate in the live shows and learn how to live in an RV. Go to rvtofreedomgroup.com to join the RV to Freedom Facebook group. And to be notified about our next live videos and more, sign up with the link provided below in the video description. We want to help you find your RV to freedom.